Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one in substance we ask you to strengthen, protect, and sanctify our souls and our bodies, for we are weak. May we grow in purity all the days of our lives, O Lord our God. To you be glory for and thanks forever. <clears throat> Peace be with the church and her children. <clears throat> Raise glory, honor, and praise to God who is known in three persons Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one true God. The angels glorify Him, and people on earth thank, worship, and exalt Him. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives, now and forever. Amen. O most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one true God, without division and beyond our understanding, you are the hope, the strength, the refuge, and salvation of those who believe in you. Now we implore you with the fragrance of this incense to pardon those who have done wrong. Guide those who have gone astray and perfect those who are righteous and purify those who have sinned. Be a father to orphans and care for widows. Feed the poor, dispel all doubts, comfort the sorrowful, soften hardened hearts, and fill oppressors with compassion. Satisfy the hungry and assist the distressed, and accept, accept those who repent. 
May we and all the faithful departed, our fathers and mothers, our brothers and sister, sisters, and our leaders believe in you and rejoice in your kingdom. We raise glory, thanks, and adoration to you now and forever. Glorious and most holy Trinity, we ask to you to accept the fragrance of this incense and to protect us that we may raise glory and thanks to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shout with joy from the mountains to the Holy Trinity. Offer praise to the Lord God, one true God in persons three.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be unaware of this mystery, so that you will not become wise in your own estimation. A hardening has come upon Israel in part, until the full number of the Gentiles comes in, and thus all Israel will be saved, as it is written. The Deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away godlessness from Jacob, and this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. In respect to the gospel, they are enemies on your account, but in respect to election, they are beloved because of the patriarchs, for the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given him anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Praise be to God always. Dilan to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Burn this incense. Kyrie eleison. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, according to St. Matthew, excuse me, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The Apostle Matthew writes, The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Then Jesus approached them and he said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. 
This is the truth, peace be with you. For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, of this mystery, lest you should also be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened in Israel until the fullness of the nations should come in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's rather amusing today, if you say mystery, the word mystery, some, for people it means like fantasy, it's your imagination, like the Easter Bunny. But mystery, of course, means something which is unseen and hidden and kept silent about. The base word in the Greek is mystein, to be silent. And so when we speak about mysterion, it's the thing of which we can perceive but it's ineffable. We can't really express it verbally. That's the real meaning behind mystery. It's true, we see it, we can understand to some extent, but it's not something that we can express fully in words. Now, this chapter 11 in St. Paul's letter to the Romans is a whole mystery which we're not actually going to deal with today, but for those who are interested, as I always encourage you to do, read the scriptures. Go back and read the fuller context excuse me, the fuller context of what we read today within the liturgy. What St. Paul is doing in this section 10, 11 of the letter to the Romans, he's explaining really in a way the history of the world. What were the Gentiles, the pagan peoples doing while Israel for 15 centuries be being formed by God? And the reason why is it provokes a question by the Romans now. This has been several decades after our Lord's ascension. And so the people in Rome, among some of the Christians in the church, of course, a number of them are from Jewish backgrounds and a number of them are from pagan backgrounds. But of course, the question becomes now, it's been 30 years. How come Israel doesn't seem to get it? Why haven't they all just come in mass? They were prepared for 15 centuries to receive the Messiah. And while there have been thousands and thousands who have done so, Israel as a whole is still standing there in opposition to the promised one. How does this happen? So that's what St. Paul is talking about in this section. And perhaps next year on this Sunday, we'll do that one. But today we want to focus more on the Trinity, which is what the Sunday is meant to commemorate. Because we've come to the whole end of the cycles of Christmas and of Easter, of the manifestation of God historically in the world, and of that man's teaching, and his death, and his resurrection, manifesting a glory of God which had not been seen before in the world. So when we speak about Trinity, it's not an abstract philosophical concept. There are philosophical terms and philosophical ways of talking about it. When you study theology, you spend months on just this mystery. You spend a whole time just on what is a person? What is the notion of person? Because, of course, for the average individual, they say, well, you believe in this Trinity thing. So are there three gods or are there one? Is there three or what? You go through this whole thing. It's not obviously numerical because three does not equal one. It is a philosophical understanding of what is unum, what is one in the metaphysical sense. Again, don't worry, we're not going to do that this morning either. But it's important to understand that the Trinity, for most, for many people, it doesn't really mean anything. It's something that was in the catechism book that I read when I had, I had to read when I was 10. Now, for the adults who have more matured in the spiritual life, you may have actually read that more recently in your religious books and your spiritual reading and your prayers. But again, for even those of us who have made progress in the gospel, often the Trinity is just 
some kind of abstract thing out there. And so it's important to understand that it's not a theory about the divinity, that it is first and foremost an experience which is lived by the church, and it is based upon love and friendship. Now we can use just simply the human image of friendship. Many of you are married because these last months have been absolutely delightful. Squealing babies and people leaving and children dropping things, it's wonderful. These walls have not heard such commotion in years, sadly. So we are delighted that you are with us. And don't worry, all of the good situs around, all these grandmothers, these matriarchs in the Lebanese community will hug all of, well, they won't hug your children now because that's not six feet, but they would hug them otherwise and welcome you with exorbitantly enthusiastic arms. So we're very pleased you are here. But the Holy Trinity is a reality. Now we go back to Israel and think about for 15 centuries, God took one people, and he tells them over and over again, I didn't pick you because you were better than any other people. It's just because I decided to pick you. All right, slap down, good, all right. Keeps us humble. But the whole 15 centuries are preparing a people. And one of the most famous things that everyone seems to know is that the temple in Jerusalem is empty. There's no, there's no statue, there's no image, there's no nothing. God continually for 15 centuries does not want them to portray, portray the one living, eternal origin of all things by any kind of attempt of visible manifestation. So the Holy and Holies in Jerusalem is empty. It has a gold box and it has the ark, but it's the space over the ark which is meant to rep represent the divinity. So for 1,500 years, Israel, Israel keeps going. What's wrong with Baal? Why can't we put up this image? Why can't we use that image? What's wrong with Astarte? These people actually make very pretty statues of Baal. Baal just means master or lord. Why can't Baal also be Yahweh? Why can't our God of Mount Sinai be the same God? In the end, don't we all worship the same God? It's all the same thing. So why can't we use Baal? Why can't we use this image? Why can't we be more like the Canaanites? And this whole question goes back and forth and God keeps telling them, you are adulterers. You are running after other husbands. I am the one who have wed you, Israel and keeps trying to make them understand the hidden God of majesty. That's their first experience. And I'm emphasizing it to understand how dramatic for these Jewish fishermen in meeting this rabbi of Nazareth had to have been. It would have shattered their entire existence because it becomes clear in their experience by what he says and by what he teaches that he's more than just a rabbi from Nazareth. And of course, in the event of the resurrection, he reveals himself in this very unique relationship with that hidden divinity. Now, we mentioned the basis of friendship. We mentioned the question of being married. Knowing another person requires us, and it's a difficult skill. We find it hard to listen more, and to speak less. It's hard for us to do that. Listening is a skill. But it's also, why do we use this? We all have heard this before, especially in marriage. The most intimate of friendship, of partnership, of foundation. And we're always told this because, of course, in order for us to know the other person, we have to mustain, we have to be silent, because it requires that the other person can speak of who they are and tell us about themselves. I'm sure you have the experience in your marriages. In a good marriage, you know the person that you're married to, not just simply their habits, their quirks, whatever, but you know them as a person much better now 30 years later than you did when you were just walking on clouds and bouncing off of walls when you first were dating. And thanks be to God that's true because of course all you're doing in that dating process is riding on hormones. 
That's not friendship. That's not relationship. That's just God's way of saying, okay, pay attention. You got to partner with someone here for the rest of your life. But it's in the listening over those years and in those tears and in that agony and that experience of the other person, you begin to know them well. I've told our people of one of the first things I was introduced to in being a priest was the first place I worked in, we had a couple who had been married over 70 years. They were in their 90s. They were farm people, Missouri, the Kansas. She was 17, he was 18 when they married, and they'd been married now for over 70 years. And they would make little walks on the day, in the afternoon. And you would see these two people who clearly, profoundly loved one another. Just take a walk around the block holding hands. And they didn't have to speak a lot because they knew one another. They had become truly two in one flesh. That's the mystery of the Trinity. It's why God uses in the Old Testament the whole mystery of hiddenness, of unseen. And so that what happens when our Lord appears on the, on the scene and starts talking, I and the Father are one, my Father, your Father, it's a different relationship. All these things that he has said, because the apostles begin to learn how to listen. And of course, Pentecost transforms them completely so that they come to understand in the profound sense of grace and illumination of their minds. They begin to see that this man from Nazareth is also at the same time identifiable with the hidden God of Mount Sinai. How they work this out, these Jews who have been taught for centuries upon centuries that there is only one God, the foundational prayer, listen, O Israel, your God is one God, repeating that over and over every single day for centuries. And now what God's providence does is they give you this extraordinary man that comes out of Nazareth who is clearly also now being forced to be seen in the same optic, optic as the hidden God of Mount Sinai. This is extraordinary. And of course, when Pentecost comes and transforms them in the experience of what they live in the reality, which is church, which is not always a very pleasant experience, especially in the last 50 years. But the reality is that God is at work and it's God clearly who leads the people of God. We would never have made it for 20 centuries if it was a purely human institution. And as I said, in the last 50 years of experience, we know that very well. If that's the kind of operation we've been running for 20th century, we wouldn't have made it out of the first, the first 75 years, let alone the first century. And so the church has an experience of the reality of God, the Spirit, working within it since Pentecost, transforming, and not just simply leading and guiding, but making people in every generation be profoundly different human beings. And in the lives of the martyrs, and the lives of the saints, which is why we just started standardizing them, canonizing them. This person shows that hand of God. This person shows that hand of God in their lives. They are standards, they are canon. We canonize them. So go and do likewise. That whole aspect of this life, of the one God who guides, and yet we have being told to a spirit, word, father. And the revelation of the hidden father always remains hidden. That's why for those of you who have a missile at home or you can look in the missile, for the day of the ascension, it's all about our Lord's transformation to prepare our, for us the path and the ability to see the hidden face, the hidden father. So the Trinity is not a philosophical experience or theory, but it is the lived reality of the God of Mount Sinai who manifests himself to us. And that is not just simply for the whole church, that's for me individually, for you individually in our spiritual lives. God didn't take the attempt to reveal who he was personally for us to go, eh, that's nice. It means something. The same way that when we listen more 
and talk less, we begin to really realize who this other person is. And you can imagine in any relationship of friendship, this person's just kind of poured their heart out one night over dinner. And you do the, eh, all right, I'll do the dishes tonight. And you just give them a walk away from the table. They would be devastated. They would be insulted. They would be hurt. That's the Trinity. God is telling us in this reality of the plan of salvation who he is, which means it means something in our individual lives as Christians. And we have to enter into this mystery of Abu Genizo, the hidden father, Bro Genizo, the hidden son, Rojo, the hidden spirit, because it means something for each of us individually. What and how? I don't know. All of the saints allowing themselves to be touched by the hand of God all became quite unique people, transformed, transfigured. And that's why when we enter into the mystery of the Holy Trinity, we begin to understand what it was that God wants to do with us now individually in this generation. Which is why if you look at what was read in the epistle today, St. Paul just finishes by this idea of this great plan of salvation of what the triune God, and it's a made up word, tri and uni. It's three, one, and the quality of being three and ones. Tertullian made the word up about the year 150. Because you're trying for a century of kind of going through this whole experience of the reality of the Catholic Church, and it's like, well, how do we articulate this reality of the Trinity, of, the, of God working among us? And well, it's a three reality, but it's clearly only one divinity. So you kind of make up this very barbaric word of three oneness. That's all the Trinity means. But we enter into that mystery when St. Paul stands before that plan of salvation. All he can finish by saying is that everything is from him. Everything is because of him. Everything is gold and directed toward him. To him be glory forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We will continue with the profession of our faith on page 748, 748. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God Son of God.
we confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Itelot madeb heda loho, warot al loho dam khade tayyot. Weinem silgo taybo taho khayun al baita khwesko dam khayek lo, hot kodesho. Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us. We recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, Saints Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Thecla. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom the sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. St. James, brother of the Lord, on page 794, 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O 
God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in a bond of love and peace. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your holy blessings upon those who bow before you. Before your holy altar, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. God the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your holy face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice. Relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son, we ask that this mystery instituted for our salvation not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks, O maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, this earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, the angels, archangels, and heavenly hosts, all praise, sing, Praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations, they cry out and they proclaim.
holy, O God, the Father, King of ages, and giver of holiness. Holy is your only Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit, who delves into all things, even into the depths of God. You are holy and almighty, the Creator and the Good One. You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandment and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the Holy and Ever-Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. Gloria eleison, Rabiano haudoctum hashrodilema bedhaye, and sabe lachma mida kodishoto, O Barahu Kadesh, Waksoya Bilatal Midao Kadomara, Sabahula Mehene Kulhu, Hono Denita, Fahuru Dil, Dahlo Faikun, Wahlov Sagi. May Tapaseo Meti Hem Hosuyam Haumeva Hoyendal Alam Alamin. O Kano Alcoso Damsi Homen Hamro Homen Mayo. Barahu Kadesh, Yabel Talmi Dao Kadomara, Sabish Tawa Mene Kulhu, Hono Denita, Demo Dilan Dianti Kihadato, Dahlo Faikun, Wahlov Sagi. May te shedu may te hem, ho soon alam alamin. Do this in memory of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this, this cup, you proclaim my death and profess my resurrection until I come again. In memory of death, O Lord, we profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest. O Lord, we remember your death, your resurrection, your ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your glorious second coming, when you shall judge the world with justice and reward all people according to their deeds. Now we ask you, do not repay us according to our sins and transgressions, but in your compassion and love for all people, cleanse us of all our sins. We, your people and your inheritance, implore you and through you and with you, implore your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you and in your Have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us and hear us. Anin Morio, an 
Sends he may make spread a life giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life giving blood, a saving blood, a heavenly blood. A blood that redeems our souls and bodies, the blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time, now and forever. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world, and for the holy places that you glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for holy Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our bishop, and all the orders of the church and those who serve her. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our parents and all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the, answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, St. John the forerunner, St. Stephen the archdeacon and first martyr, St. James the brother of the Lord, St. Joseph, St. Marin, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teachings in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, 
we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come out, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure, but when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. O Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessing upon us and sanctify us so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and his love for all people, you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The grace of the most holy trinity eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. 
one Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for He is one in heaven and on earth. To Him be glory forever. May us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by Your holy body and blood, and our souls purified. Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With all the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, protect us, bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to the living and bless them with hope. Through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and all the saints, now and forever. Amen. So I know coming to church and especially going to communion can be stressful for some. So I congratulate you how beautifully you did today. Thank you very much. And the second announcement I have to make, that those who wish to pray, you can stay in the church as long as you like. But if you wish to visit, please visit outside, just so that we can keep the air clear, because that's what we're supposed to be doing. You know the routine. Again, it has been a delight to have you among us. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.